Nikola Tesla is a pretty interesting guy, to say the least, but it always confused me how someone who seemed to work for at least some humanitarian causes at his core, things like free energy and talk of world peace, also supposedly spent the entire 20th century of his life building a death ray. I've heard of the death ray, I've heard about it over and over, but I never really looked into it. And it kind of fell down a small rabbit hole the other day and realized that the history on that is not, or what is generally believed. So I heard about Tesla's death ray uh, years ago. And ever since I first uh, learned about him, and people still bring it up all the time, that he was inventing this ultimate weapon. And upon his death in 1943, the government went in to both the rooms that he lived out his life on the 33rd floor of the New Yorker Hotel and confiscated all of his papers and his belongings. And men from the Navy also took over a storage unit he had. There was one very interesting letter that stuck out. And that's this memo dated April 17th, 1950, which discusses a warehouse, a storage unit that Tesla had at the Manhattan Warehouse and Storage Company on 52nd Street and 7th Avenue in New York City. And they talked about how no one had had access to that storage unit except right after Tesla's death in early 1943, when an examination was made of his effects. Michael King, who was the floor supervisor of that warehouse floor, where Tesla's stuff was kept for approximately 10 years, stated that at the time, numerous photographs were taken by examiners. His description of the equipment used would tend to show that a microfilm reproduction was made of some of the papers of the deceased scientist. Mr. King also added that several of the group making the examination wore U.S. Navy uniforms, and during the two days required to complete the examination, the civilian assistants in the group were identified to him only as, quote, federal authorities. And it's known that the government classified some of those documents, and debates still go on today about what they classified and what they did with what they classified. But the idea that Tesla was over there working on a, a pew pew Star Wars ray gun or Star Trek ray gun have been, in my view, exaggerated. Because if you actually go back and read the articles that came out at the time that Tesla made his quote unquote death ray announcement back in 1934, that's not exactly what he said. So this was reported in newspapers all over the place, but the main one I see referenced a lot is from the July 11th, 1934 issue of the New York Times. Tesla at 78 bears new death beam, right? But then they say defensive weapon only. And if you go down in here and you actually read what he's proposing, it doesn't actually sound like a death ray. It says, when put in operation, Dr. Tesla said this latest invention of his would make war impossible. This death beam, he asserted, would surround each country like an invisible Chinese wall, only a million times more impenetrable. It would make every nation impregnable against attack by airplanes or by large invading armies. But while it will make every nation safe against any attack by a would-be invader, Dr. Tesla added, the death beam by its nature could not be employed similarly as a weapon for offense. For this death beam, he explained, could be generated only from large stationary and immovable power plants stationed in the manner of old time forts at various strategic distances from each country's border. They could not be moved for the purposes of attack. And death ray sounds really good in headlines, so I'm sure I understand why the media ran with it but a, a wall of energy does not sound the same to me as a ray or a beam. Some of the headlines did run with the fact that he was inventing these rays, plural, to stop wars as a curtain of death. This one says curtain of death will be placed around the borders of the country. But it's a, it's a force field. And it says here he declared he planned to give his secret to the Geneva Conference in the interest of peace. So... He was not at all trying to build an offensive death ray war weapon. He's talking about an electronic or electric force field of particles, right? Not, it's not the same. That's not the same as a death beam. I mean, I guess it is technically, but it's also not. Because when you say death ray, I'm going to go ahead and guess nine times out of ten, most people's brains automatically think of like the pew pew gun with like a beam of light coming out of it. That's just not what he was saying. So this is more like a force field, not a death ray. 
an energetic wall that stops entire squadrons of warplanes from even flying over a nation's border, just shuts them down, or renders tanks and battleships inoperable. So that does the opposite of what a death ray would do. This just, this just stops war from being possible. And he was purposefully designing it in such a manner to make it impossible to turn it into an offensive weapon. In the configuration that Tesla described, nations would be protected from other nations from being invaded. And then war would simply cease to be possible, at least not in the ways that it's traditionally been fought, warplanes and tanks and battleships and stuff like that. Because if every nation on Earth had one of these, it would make it almost like a cartoon level silly to try and perpetrate war in the traditional way that it's been done with all of this hardware. And maybe that sounds like a totally crazy idea that could never work for a number of reasons. And there's going to be someone who comes into the comments and goes, actually, quantum physics, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. But, you know, at least somebody was trying to think in this way because it's, it's the way that I feel like it's the way scientists should be trying to think, right? What is a huge problem in our world? Freaking war. <laughs> And, and yeah, maybe it's a crazy idea that could never work, that he was working on world peace, which even the phrase world peace just sounds like a crazy impossibility, but maybe it takes an impossible idea from an impossible mind to solve our so-called impossible problems. Then I found out that Tesla wasn't the only person working on this back in the mid-1930s. So the following year, he, so he makes his announcement in 1934. The following year in 1935, I found this article having to do with Professor Jacques Bremont, a radiologist out of the University of Paris, who revealed an invisible death ray that he used to kill a mouse instantly from a distance of 30 feet. However, he said this invention was cost prohibitive as the contraption cost $2,000 to kill a single mouse. So scaling it up would be exorbitant. Even for the drunken extravagance of war, it would cost too much. He goes on to say the death ray, which would be fatal to a man, is still no more than a bad dream, not likely to be realized, if at all, for many years. But this professor says if he were to discover it, he thinks he would throw the formula into the sea. Curiously, though, he then goes on to say that he's skeptical even of the reports that German scientists have developed a beam which stops the motors of airplanes miles away. So there you have scientists in at least three major Western countries working on this kind of tech by the mid-1930s. So I have to add this in because I came across this. It got to the point where they were doing full-page spreads about trying to calm people down in 1935, that, that death rays were not scientifically possible. It came out that Marconi made an announcement that he was working with experiments with a secret ray, which he believes will enable him to stop airplane motors. But further proving my point about Tesla not making such a ray, specifically in this same article, they interviewed Tesla about this claim. Turning to Marconi's claim, Dr. Tesla said such a ray would be difficult to operate effectively and that protection against such a ray would be easily contrived. Now, the transmission of such rays is greatly handicapped by the small amount of energy available. Assuming that a plane is six miles distant, the ray to reach it would cover an area of one billion square centimeters, so that energy per centimeter available for interference is very trifling. However, if it were true that a ray of sufficient power could be sent such a distance, a remedy could easily be devised making the ray harmless. And what would the remedy be, he was asked. An efficient copper screening, not of the whole motor, but of vulnerable parts. It would also be easy to change to ignition systems of different principles, he added. Diesel motors would be another remedy. So clearly whatever Tesla was working on was not this type of ray. It was something else. Because here he is in August of 1935, a year after he made his announcement, debunking Marconi's announcement of having experimented with a secret ray to stop motors. And that's only what I was able to find. I'm sure if I dig into that, just that, even further, I will probably find more. I, I think the point is proven, however, that that is clearly something that they were all working on. I mean, every time one nation or scientists in a nation announce they're working on some type of technology, competing countries also begin racing to develop the same thing. I mean, that's just the way it's been done for a very long time. 
So Tesla's announcement to the press in 1934 surely would have set off such a chain reaction with that tech if it wasn't going on already by that point. And keep in mind, this is only a few years before Nazi Germany invaded Poland and World War II kicked off. Nikola Tesla was hit by a car while crossing the street in 1937, and he passed away in 1943 before World War II ended. And whatever was going on, it's pretty clear that humanity did not end up utilizing an energy force field peace weapon to end World War II or end all wars. Instead, we ended up with the atomic bomb in 1945, a weapon that would ensure war could never end. I mean, even today, we are living under the threat of nuclear war and potential nuclear war with nations like Russia and Iran are always getting mentioned in our press and justifying all kinds of militarization and defense spending as I speak. People are now saying we're closer to World War III than ever. So sadly, we did not end up with a peace weapon. We ended up with an endless war weapon that also justifies or attempted to be used to justify world government. That's what we ended up with. 